In this lecture, we're going to look at the cranial nerves. Cranial nerves are indicated by Roman numerals 1 through 12, from anterior to posterior, and they may have one or more of three functions. There is a sensory function, either special or general, and there's two motor functions. Somatic motor, which is a skeletal muscle, or parasympathetic, which is regulation of glands, smooth muscles, cardiac muscle, etc. The first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve. And it is a special sensory nerve. And its principal function is smell. So olfaction is smell. And that's why it's called the olfactory nerve. The way I remember it is I think of a smelly old factory. Okay. And so if you remember in the skull, the cribriform plate, and the cribriform plate had all these tiny little holes in it that were called the olfactory foramina. And you can see this is where the olfactory nerve goes through. Now, typically, you know, when we're looking at the brain, we'll say that, oh, this is cranial nerve number one. It's really not. Okay, this is actually where secondary uh, or second order neurons will um, hook up with the primary olfactory nerve. But you can see that the olfactory nerve comes down and um, it's going to go to these olfactory receptor cells. And we'll actually go into more detail about this later on when um, we actually talk about the special senses. Uh, but you can see it's in just a very small region of the upper nasal cavity where you have the olfactory epithelium. Cranial nerve number two is the optic nerve. And the optic nerve comes from the eyeball. So its principal function is vision or sight. Cranial ner nerve number three is the oculomotor nerve. And its motor, and that's its function is motor, and so the somatic is movement of the eyeballs in the upper lid. As a matter of fact, it opens the eyelid. Cranial nerve number seven, which is the facial nerve, closes the eyelid. How you can think of that is think of Roman numeral number three, you know, with the, the line at the top and the bottom. Think of that as like a little gate holding the eyelid open. So that's how you remember that cranial nerve number three opens the eye and think of the number seven is like a hook and it's pulling the eyelid closed and so that's how you remember it closes the eye so um its motor autonomic is going to be adjusts the lens for near vision for accommodation and also constriction of the pupil and um, we see it right here this is the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve number three. If you notice, there's two other nerves showing. These nerves also innervate um, some of the muscles that move the eye. And I'll show you a little bit later a video on how to remember which eye muscle is moved by which cranial nerve. And here's the trochlear nerve, cranial nerve number four. And we see the picture right here. Again, it's going to um, a muscle to move the eye. And so its main function is motor. The trigeminal is cranial nerve number five. And it's a mixed uh, cranial nerve. So it has both sensory and motor. For sensory, we have touch pain and thermal sensation from the scalp, the face, and the oral cavity, including teeth and the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And for motor, we have chewing and it uh, controls middle ear muscles. And so there's three branches to the trigeminal, and that's why it's 
called trigeminal, tri for three. And we have an ophthalmic branch. And here's the distribution of that nerve. We have a maxillary branch right here. And then we have a mandibular branch. And then cranial nerve number six is the abducens nerve. And we can see abducens here. Now, what does that word sound like? Abducens. It sounds like to abduct or abduct. And that's exactly what it does. It abducts the eye. So it uh, pulls your eye so that you look laterally. And again, we can only look at one eye at a time because obviously when the one eye is looking laterally, it's a different eye that looks medially. Okay, but um, the one that is looking laterally has been innervated by the abducens nerve. So cranial nerve number six. So that's the lateral rectus muscle. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, a video to help you remember which of these nerves control which eye muscles. Let's take a look at the cranial nerve innervation of the eye muscles. First, I'd like you to write this down, kind of a formula. It's LR6 SO4 3. The LR6 stands for the lateral rectus muscle, innervated by cranial nerve number 6, the abducens nerve. SO4 stands for the superior oblique muscle, which is innervated by cranial nerve number four. And that's the trochlear nerve. All other muscles, including the inferior oblique, superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, are all innervated by cranial nerve number three, the oculomotor nerve. Well, I hope that helped. Looking now at the facial nerve, cranial nerve number seven. Now again, this is going to be a mixed nerve, which means there is sensory and motor, so both sensory and motor uh, function. The sensory function is provides taste to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And it's also for touch, pain, and thermal sensation from skin in the external ear canal. Motor, we have control of muscles of facial expression and middle ear muscles. And also for motor, for autonomic motor, we have secretion of tears and saliva. The next cranial nerve is cranial nerve number eight, vestibulocochlear nerve. Its function is special sensory, which would be hearing and equilibrium. Now this is composed of two nerves, the vestibular nerve and the cochlear nerve. You can see here the vestibular nerve coming from your balance center, basically. And um, then we have the cochlear nerve, which is for hearing. And so that's why you have the equilibrium area for vestibular nerve. The uh, hearing is from the cochlear nerve. It combines to give us the vestibulocochlear nerve. Next is glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve number nine. It's a mixed nerve. For sensory, we have taste from the posterior one-third of the tongue, proprioception in some swallowing muscles. It monitors blood pressure and oxygen and carbon dioxide levels in the blood. There's also touch, pain, and thermal sensation from the skin of the external ear and upper pharynx. 
Also, it helps in uh, swallowing and secretion of saliva, and that would be its motor functions. Then we have cranial nerve number 10, vagus, baby. What happens on the vagus nerve stays on the vagus nerve. Oh, anyway. Uh, so the vagus nerve, uh, and by the way, vagus in this case means wanderer. And if we look at it, and you can see how it wanders all over the place. And uh, the old name for this was the pneumogastric nerve. And you can see why, because it goes to the lungs for pneumo and also to the stomach for gastric. But it also goes to the heart, the pharynx, and with the stomach, this uh, promotes acid secretion. And in the old days, before we had proton pump inhibitors and things like that for chronic um, um, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, they would have to go in surgically and clip some of these little branches going to the stomach to reduce the amount of acid that the stomach was making. So the sensory function of this is taste from the epiglottis, proprioception from throat and voice box muscles. It monitors blood pressure and oxygen and carbon dioxide levels in the blood. Uh, touch, pain, and thermal sensation from skin of external ear and sensations of thoracic and abdominal organs. For motor, we have swallowing, vocalization, and coughing. In autonomic motor, we have motility and secretion of gastrointestinal organs and constriction of respiratory passageways, and it also decreases heart rate. Next is the accessory nerve. The former name for that is the spinal accessory. And that'll be important when I give you the mnemonic that I use to help you to remember this. Um, it just goes by accessory now. But that's cranial nerve number 11. And it's going to be motor and it's movement of the head and pectoral girdle. So basically, if you shrug your shoulders, that is cranial nerve Number 11, the spinal accessory nerve, innervating the muscles in order to do that. And then cranial nerve number 12, which is the hypoglossal nerve. And that's also motor, and it's for speech, manipulation of food, and swallowing, so it innervates the tongue muscles. Okay, so the mnemonic that I have for cranial nerves, and there's a lot of them. You can Google um, cranial nerve mnemonics. There are some that I cannot repeat on uh, video, uh, but um, this is the one I learned decades ago, and I've always been able to remember all the cranial nerves from this one. So it is on old Olympus towering tops, a fin via Germany, viewed some hops. So on old Olympus towering tops, so you're up on a mountain. A Finn, someone from Finland, via Germany, they're on the German side of the mountain, viewed some hops. And hops are a plant where you use the flowers uh, for flavoring beer. Okay, so olfactory is on. Optic is old, oculomotor is Olympus. Now, how do you remember these in order? Because we have three O's in order. How I remember it is if you're coming around a corner, what's the first thing on your head that's going to stick out past the uh, corner? It's your nose, right? So that's olfactory. Then your eyes, and then you're looking. So that's optic. So you're seeing if there's somebody around the corner. Then you're moving your eyes around just to make sure that there's nobody hiding around that corner. So that's oculomotor. Okay, and then towering is trochlear. Tops is trigeminal. And abducens is A. Fin is facial. Vestibulocochlear is via. Glossopharyngeal, Germany. Vegas viewed. Now, 
remember I said the old name for accessory was spinal accessory, and that's why we have the S here for some. Now there are newer mnemonics that, uh, that don't use the spinal accessory version, they use the accessory version. Okay, and then finally hypoglossal for hops. Now, how can we remember if these are sensory, motor, or both sensory and motor? Well, I have one more mnemonic for you. And um, the S in the mnemonic stands for sensory. The M in the mnemonic stands for motor. And the B stands for both sensory and motor. So it goes like this. Some say merry money. But my brother says big brains matter more. So he, he likes smart ladies. So some say merry money, but my brother says big brains matter more. Okay. And so that's how you can tell if it's sensory, motor, or both. I hope this helped.